Wow. I've got an absolute beauty for you today. Now, I am a, um, yeah, I'm happy to say a self-confessed football snob. I'm not one of these guys that says real football is in the non-leagues. No, I like beautiful football. And after supporting York City, and even when they had a really good season in 21-22, getting promoted, legendary manager Sir John Askey took over halfway through the season, surged through the playoffs, finally won the playoffs, and the football was horrendous. It was percentage football. It was, can we get the ball up the park? Can the big striker hold it up? Can we get bodies round? Can we work on second balls? And it wasn't great to watch, even in the playoffs. It was pretty horrendous. Now, Notts County, on the other hand, are doing things slightly differently and winning games of football. A lot of games of football. Narrowly missing out on promotion, automatic promotion by Wrexham. However, they have kind of probably been installed as the best football inside in the division, thanks to Luke Williams, their manager, creating this kind of a 3-4-2-1 or a 3-4-1-2. He's played all sorts of variations, different roles. We're going to talk about that. However, I've got it going. It is a possession-based tactic. I have done this in the fifth tier of English football, and I have created... It's my best simulation so far, so it shows how well a tactic is working. I'm that confident with it that I'm going to plug it into my... Amateur side, Kiev or Verona in my Twitch save. Link down in the description for that. All right, let's get into it. A big shout out to Tom Williams, who is kind of the, the Twitter guy for Notts County. So make sure you go down and give him a follow. He's already promised that if Notts County get promoted in the final against Chesterfield, that he will still cover the Vanarama National League. Go check him out. All tactical, fan base, signings, everything. Go check him out down in the description. All right, guys, let's get into today's... Notts County, total football, 3, 4, 2, 1, let's go. So first of all, here is the simulation that I have done. Now, 108 points, you will say, is I like my simulations because I kind of do things based on real life. I don't expect them to kind of kill the match engine. And even though Notts County are... I think third favourites, they were Wrexham were first, Chesterfield second, we were third favourites. We've absolutely dominated and we lost. <laughs> Frustratedly, we lost three out of the last four games. We lost at way at Wrexham, home against Woking and then home against bloody, of all teams, York City. Um, so we could have had a lot, lot more, but I'm, I'll take the 108 points, no problem. So there you go, 46, 34 wins, six draws, 60 feet. 94 scored, so over two a game. And what I like to see when I'm challenging for titles and create a good team, you want a good defensive base. And having under a goal or less, I think is pretty good. 42, goal difference 52, 108 points. Now, is this is a possession-heavy tactic. So chance creation, you're not going to get as much of. It's not absolutely gagan pressing, counter-pressing. Loads of tricky inside forwards and uh, Segundo Volante is a deep double pivot. We've got none of that. We've got two deep, we've got two playmakers in the middle. Possession is key. It had to be the best possession stats in the league and we have done that. There you go, 66% average possession. All right, so it kind of fits the bill of what County have been obviously trying to achieve. Not trying to achieve high possession numbers, but generally this is what they want. Dominate the ball, dictate, control games. And I think I've managed to do that pretty well with this tactic. Couple of shout outs before I show you the tactic. Macaulay Langstaff, ex York City, <clears throat> had an absolute shitter when he played at York City. 10 in 31 and then 1 in 21. I think in real life he's got up towards 50 goals already. I'm not quite sure the exact number. I will put it across the screen so everyone knows if you're not aware. And for me, he scored 44 in 44, 47 in 47 in all comps. So even though I've been sent loads of sort of like reports and people's blogs about not scouting how they've played, when I've been watching a couple of the games over the last month, because I knew this video was coming up, I've actually really enjoyed watching Matt Palmer and how he moves the ball and how he kind of controls games. And he's been an absolute force for us in the midfield. Only two goals, which is fine. I'm not expecting him to get on many, but 20 assists. And we've also got his midfield partner, John Bostock, who has played really well over the last couple of weeks. Interesting role against Wrexham that we might mention a little bit later on, but generally starting a little bit deeper. He's got himself, what, seven goals, three assists. He's kind of the key pass. He's that he's that player that will split a defence, play it into the two tens, drops off, gets on the ball, keeps the play ticking. Him and Palmer have been tremendous, and I've really enjoyed watching these two in the bit of analysis and research that I have been doing for this tactic. Okay, guys, so this is the tactic. I've actually got two tactics for you today. Just a little slight variation because they often play, they generally play this 3-4-2-1, but they have got Scott, 
Sedwin Scott, who often comes off the bench and has played a lot of games this season. So we've got two variations. I think it's always important as well just to change things up in game to help you a little bit. The kind of the team instructions are exactly the same. It's just a couple of player role tweaks. So the Notts County. 3, 4, 2, 1. Now, my Patreons, this tactic is now available on my Patreon site. Go check it out. Support the channel. Muchly appreciated. You guys have now got the tactic files to put straight in the FM folder, and away you go. Everybody else, if you don't want to be a Patreon, don't worry. We're going to go through everything so you can copy it into your FM save. And if you're wanting to control games, score goals, play a little bit of total football, regardless of the level you're at, this is the tactic for you. All right, so... Basically, general positions of play, they like to build out from the back. They've got three excellent ball-playing defenders who all like to get on the ball, the two wider centre-halves. In particular, Cameron, who does venture a little bit further forward. Slocum, the goalkeeper as well, has got a decent variety of passing out from the back. He's also gone long. We've scored a couple of goals, actually, where he's just hit it long, caught it in his hands and hit long, finding Langstaff, and we've scored a couple of goals on the break. Two wing-backs, very aggressive. They like to get really, really high, pretty much going as wingers, trying to get on the end of each other's crosses at times as well. In the middle of midfield, we've got the playmakers, the ballers, the two players that are going to help us progress the player into that final third. We've got Boscott and Palmer. Two tens, this varies depending on injuries and stuff like that, but the star of the show has been Ruben Rodriguez. He's had a really good season in real life for Notts County. And then we've used Austin for the most of our games. There's a lot of roaming from these two. In particular, getting into sort of like half spaces, those little gaps between maybe a full back and a centre half combining. Often the wing backs will get higher than the two tens, and they're a little bit of a cutback option. And then, of course, up front, the goal scorer. I did start him as an advance forward and we tweaked it to a poacher and it absolutely worked so well. I've decided that I just wanted him to be a penalty box hunter, working the shoulders of defenders, not really chasing things into channels, just staying central, scoring plenty of goals inside that penalty area. OK, so Slocum, we've got... Sweeper, keeper on support. I've put it on support just so we get a little bit of variety. He will play it out from the back. He will aim for wing backs. And of course, with that support role, it does mean that he takes more risks, which generally then does mean that he'll try and play longer passes. Wide centre back on the right hand side, we've gone for Rollinson. We've gone with just a wide centre back on defence. You could probably, if you're wanting to maybe dominate and tweaks in game, Luke Williams is so good at tweaks in game and in particular playing against teams with a low block you could probably put Rollinson as a wide centre back on support but just for this I've got him as a defend central defender on cover for Baldwin he will obviously drop up they make a triangle with the hope they can eventually get either a Rollinson or Cameron on the ball to progress the play Cameron wide centre back on support with the player instruction of dribble more it is a favourite of mine P.I. On FM23, but works really well. He does often get into these areas in particular as well. If you're pressing, if you're playing up against maybe a front two, you want someone to try and progress the play a little bit, and Cameron can do that in this wide centre back role with dribble more. They'll pass, they'll pass, they'll pass. When he gets the opportunity to progress, he'll carry it with that PI. On the two full backs, we have got stay wider for both of them. The idea is that they keep their width as much as possible. I kind of saw them drifting in a little bit now. They do drift in. They've actually played at times, even with inverted wing backs. And then that's to allow more space out wide. So they maybe start with the two tens in wider areas. But generally, two very aggressive attacking wing backs. Stay wide. I just say they keep high and wide. Cutbacks, passes into the penalty area, trying to find these two tens in the half space. The midfield too. Now, Bostock can do everything, but he's general. Actually, the game against Wrexham, he was a lot different. He played very high. He kind of played as like a Mazar, like a bit like a Granite Xhaka has kind of been doing for Arsenal, staying very high and quite wide. But generally, he gets on the ball. He even covers in defence, which allows a Cameron and a Rollington. He'll often drop even as far as into the back three. But we've just got him as a deep line playmaker on defend. I was going to put him in here, but then I said I didn't want him to actually sit too much on the toes. We want to progress the ball. We want Cameron to try and progress it. Can Baldwin find passes? Can we break through lines a little bit? Get Bostock in here in the middle third. And then can he have the skill and the quality to find these two tens? And then Palmer, he doesn't like it, but I've put him as a roaming playmaker. He gets on the ball. Sometimes he's high. Sometimes he's really deep. So I thought a roaming playmaker, generally ticking over player, is what we want from him. And I have just put the player instruction of tackle harder on, just so we have that little bit more bite 
in the mid midfield. And also, I forgot to mention, John Bostock, I've got Tate Morris because we want him to be creative as much as we possibly can on the ball. Right, into Rodriguez. I've got him on the right-hand side. I think that's generally what, from what I've seen in the games that I've watched on telly and a few little bits that I've read. Rodriguez generally comes onto this right-hand side. I've got take more risks as an attacking midfielder on attack, dribble more, roam from position and move into channels just so he moves into these areas here. I don't want him to stay wider, but I do want him to roam around a little bit, find these little pockets whenever. And then moving over to Austin on the left-hand side, the attacking midfielder on support, move into channels and tackle harder. I think Sedwin Scott has actually done it a fair few times. He didn't. He was sub at the weekend against in the semi-final win against Boreham Wood. He can sometimes do it, but it was Austin at the weekend, so that's why I've kind of had Austin in. And in just for FM basis, Austin does suit it more than Sedwin Scott. And then up front, as I said, I did have him as an advanced forward, but I've just got him poacher in, score goals, work the penalty box, get in there. We don't need him in build-up. We've got this box midfield in here. These attacking four, we've got the width. That's going to be created with the wing backs on attack. Get in that penalty area. Make sure you're on hand to score a shit ton of goals. And that he did. Okay. The little other instruction, I'm just going to put it across to the two, is if Sedwin Scott comes on. So I've got taken out the AM on support and simply just put a target forward on support with the poacher. That's it. That's all it is for the other tactic. The team instructions are the same. Okay, the team instructs himself, positive mentality. We want to get on the ball. We want to control games. We want to progress the ball. We want to take a few little risks when we can, in particular with these midfielders in here. In possession, shorter passing with a standard tempo. That will just help with those possession numbers. Anything more than that, we might struggle just to hold on to the ball. What I really liked about Notts County the weekend, even in the 94th, 5th minute when they were searching for that equaliser, they were still pass. They were still getting Bostock on the ball. He was still waiting for that right little opening. So I want that tempo just to be able to keep what we want in that tactic. We're not going to force things too much, hopefully, with that standard tempo. Help us keep possession. Also, shorter passing will help us with those possession numbers. Never time wasting. Work the ball into the box. Fairly wide attacking width. In transition, we've got shorter kicks. I've put shorter kicks just so it stops him going long all the time. But I have seen numerous times where he's played it into either the wing backs and to the number, not to the much the number 10s, but trying to distribute over the defence for Langstaff to run onto. So take short kicks, um, distribute centre, distribute to the centre halves. Counter press, we've got because there is that initial press to hunt the ball back and keep hold of the ball, control games by having the ball. And I haven't put counter on. We are possession based side. We don't, we aren't playing without and out wingers. So I thought, let's just get the ball. Let's once again help increase that control of a game and help us increase that possession numbers so we've not had counter on something a little bit different maybe for FM23 and then out of possession we have got a high press with a much higher line the one thing I think they were caught out at the weekend high line no pressure on the ball and ball played over the top we've had it a little bit but that's the risk that you're going to do they said the idea is that we have the ball as much as possible we dominate games we control games by having the ball ourselves you could even be you could even be more aggressive and put step up more on which is something they've probably done i would say that's kind of a realistic move if you really want to go for it trigger press more often all right guys we're going to go and see a couple of little games towards the end of the season see a couple of goals and see how it looks in the match engine let's go okay the first one's quite a direct one actually we win a we win a 50 50 into palmer there is langstaff playing on the shoulder in he goes he is good at, i think he's finishing his like 15 and pace 15 what i suggest is you don't need someone who is uh super technical i don't think just langstaff 15 pace 15 finishing will score you an absolute shit ton of goals with the chances that you create for him in this tactic so there was the first. This one's one of my favourites. Just showing where we want Rodriguez. So he is combining. We've got that room into channels a little bit. And he just gets into a little pocket between the central defender here and the left fullback. For a cutback, which we spoke about when we were talking through the tactic. And he turns and it's a wonderful finish. But getting into those little areas between the left back and the centre half. Absolutely lethal. And the next one's a brilliant goal once again. We're trying to get the ball into this right channel. There's Palmer drifting in, getting the ball. He's now got lots of space to move into. Finds Langstaff. We've got Rodriguez and he's got Austin for support. We've got the two wing backs on their bikes already. In particular, this right hand side. I'm going to say Nemane. That could be horrendously wrong. Apologise, Knox County fans. Quick little passing moves. 
waiting for the opportunity. Can we get the ball out wide? Yes, we can. Out to the wing back, who's basically playing as a winger now, isn't he? But we've waited for that time to get it back. The cut back again. There is Rodriguez in that little half space, finding a little bit of space inside the penalty area. Ball comes out, we win it again. Palmer, roaming playmaker, getting a little bit further forward, probably shooting distance there, blocked. We do get a rebound, a little bit of luck, but how we built up the player, passing through the thirds, get it into the striker, popping it off. Can we then get, we've sucked. I think because of the tactic, because of the, the, the back three, the, two, the box central midfield, it sucks the whole team in, the opposition, into the centre of the pitch. I think that's why Luke Williams probably went with the inverted wing-backs as well, to really suck all the play to give you more opportunities of space and 1v1s in the wide areas. And we've done that. And obviously, you do need quality in the wide areas. But generally in FM, you'll get away with it if you've got a half-decent crosser, someone who can run with it, someone who can dribble. They can find a few little passes in the half-space to the two tens. You'll, you'll create You'll create plenty of chances. And this is us just then winning back possession. And now we're patient with it. Cameron, the wide centre-back on support, looking for the opportunity to drive forward. He comes back, he recycles, waiting for the right pass. Palmer's managed to get himself into a little bit of space. Again, so good at finding space, Palmer. And then in we are because of the two tens. They've come quite narrow this time, but we're going to find Austin in there, look. Oh, no, he doesn't. He finds Rodriguez, actually. Really good pass into Rodriguez. We switch it out to the fullback, and now he's in. Isn't closed down. Opportunity once again. Suck, suck the team into the middle. Can we get it out to the wing backs? And this time, instead of getting a crossing opportunity, we got an attempt on goal. And then this one's a little bit of a break. It's just going to kind of show you, because of the two tens, what you can kind of get. Couple of quick passes and you're in. Macaulay Langstaff is now always going to try and exploit space. Look, times is run absolutely perfectly. It's not the most wonderful goal. To be fair, it's a decent finish, but you're going to get that variation with the poacher. That poacher will always look to go in behind. If you've got those two tens and you've got them two playmakers as well, Palmer and Bostock, they will try and find him at the right times as well. They will find his feet. They'll play him through. And I'm pretty sure any sort of half decent poacher. Now his his actual numbers for the season. Bear in mind he scored 47 goals. His average rating is 7.17. So just be aware of that. A couple of times, for me, he's literally been on a 6.1, 6.0. But because he's not had many opportunities, I've just left him on the pitch. If you know your player, your poacher is going to score and can score and he hasn't been wasteful in front of goal, just leave him on. Just leave him on. He'll get the chance eventually. I think that's what Luke Williams has kind of done with his side. He's not panicked during games. Played the same way. We'll get a chance. He'll get a chance. He did get a couple of chances towards the end, actually, on, on yesterday, Sunday. Missed a couple, but kept him on the pitch because he know at some point he will probably get a chance and he will definitely score. So just be aware of that with the poacher. Don't contribute much else. Look, only two assists as well. He isn't going to contribute much apart from scoring goals. And so just be aware of Kind of ignoring that average rating. All right, guys, that is it. It's an absolute Bobby Dazzler. GG to Notts County. And a big shout out at the start of the video, as I said, to Tom Williams. Go check him out down in the description. Patreons, go and download it. If you would like to support me on Patreon as well, we're up to about 55 patrons now, so we are doing really well. Thank you for your support. Your Patreon money is helping me replace parts of the PC. I need a new PSU. I need a new motherboard this year. I probably need a new case as well. I've currently got a fan blowing into it to stop it from switching off. So your support has been tremendous and will be tremendous for the rest of 2023. So I appreciate it. Go plug it in. I'm going to use it in my Twitch save with Kiev of Verona. Started it on Sunday. I am actually going to be streaming tonight around half past nine. Link down in the description. Go check me out. Go give us a follow. Come and enjoy the chat. And yeah, that's it. Take care. Enjoy it. Plug it in. Let me know how it is. See you later.